वर्ष नंबर ट्वेंटी फोर अलम वेदेरल शास्त्र अलम स्मृतिपुराण के परमात्मनि विज्ञाते इति वेदांत डिंडिम सो एज वी हैव सीन दिस वर्स दैट अलम बुद्धि टू बी डेवलप्ड दैट एनफ इन माय लाइफ द कंटेंटमेंट द सैटिस्फैक्शन मस्ट बी माय फर्स्ट प्रायोरिटी If I am seeker of truth, for me the first criteria is I am content. Being contented, based on my prarabdha, let me do what is to be done, so that I don't lose anything. Nor I am excited. when something i gain because remember when there is excitement in life with reference to anything or anybody with reference to the same thing or same person you will have suffering because wherever there is pleasure there has to be suffering because you have never seen a coin without both sides unless you go for cryptocurrency still they design both sides <laughs> it's a very funny concept still they design okay <laughs> so what does it mean here is that if you observe wherever there is that oh god these people don't understand anything <laughs> so wherever there is goodness there has to be also badness because it's just standpoint however when i start developing alam buddhi i am not excited with good things nor i am affected with bad things if you observe i personally have seen my life personally whatever i thought of was bad in my life later on that became good that became the foundation the base of goodness in me also surrounding me also same way whatever i was considering was good later on that created lot of problem you might have observed in your life too so all this goodness or badness are conditional and that conditioning is completely depends upon your mood your likes and dislikes on your ahankar the goodness and badness has nothing to do with the situation nor with reference to your growth can you see this point that's why mula story reminds us the truth of life the story is which story if people should be because no which story you say swami ji bola thousand time comes which one will remember see this <coughs> mula was relaxing as he used to relax his son also used to relax much more because he was following the footprint of father young lazy in the highest third so the villagers came and asked mula what is this your son look young 24 25 year old man not boy doing nothing what is this he is good for nothing that time mula said how do you know that he is good for nothing maybe one day 
he will be the best young person in this village. So people were shocked, okay, every parent, you know, supports their child, okay, they went back, sorry, sorry. And after a few days, this is Mula's son, went to the jungle with his horse and came back with a wild, best breed of another horse. So, whole villagers were shocked, wow, really, whatever you said, true. Our children are good for nothing. Now he could get the best breed. Then that time Mula said, How do you know that my child is good? <laughs> Maybe it is bad. How do you know? They were shocked. What is going on? Whenever you say good, whenever you say bad, he says good. Whenever you say good, bad. Okay, they went back. The story goes further. So Mula's son was training that wild horse nicely. One day, the horse took this Mula's son to the jungle and ran away and he fell down from the horse, broke his back and people rescued him and came back. So everybody came to sympathize, really we are sorry, whatever has happened, really we are sorry. That time Mula said, how do you know that it is bad? Maybe it is for good. How do you know? How can you come to this conclusion that it is bad for my child? All we are shocked, what is going on? <laughs> we have come here to sympathize, he talks differently. Okay. As he was lying down all the time, the, <coughs> in the country, in the kingdom, war was announced. So all the youngsters were forced to join the army. And when they came to see Mula's son, he was lying down on the bed and he was not allowed. He could not join. The story goes further. Whoever joined the army never came back. Sad story, but doesn't matter, okay? Just to come to a conclusion that how do you know that this moment is good for you. Also, how do you know that this moment is bad for you? Remember, the goodness and badness completely depends upon your likes and dislikes. Completely depends upon, in short, your mood. Completely depends upon your motives. Completely depends upon your ego. And if you know how to really polish your ego, if you know how to look at your likes and dislikes through the situation, good can be converted into bad, bad can be converted into good. I would rather say, good can be converted into better, bad can be converted into good. So, that's why one need not. So, that's why the point is very clear here. Alam vedehi, alam sastrehi. So you discover enough buddhi. You are neither excited for anything nor you are challenged or depressed or agitated. So if you are challenged, depressed or agitated with reference to anything or anybody, that means you need to work a lot. This is the truth, this is the reality. So with this what happens is not only that, let us read the next. Nachar, Narchana Yajusar Thosthi. No, Samnar Thosthi Kashanam. Jate Brahmatma Bigyani. Iti Vedanta Dindyamaha. Brahma Atma, Brahmatma Bigyana Jate. It's very nice. Brahmatma Vigyane Jate. So once the knowledge of Brahma Atma means Brahma is Atman, Atman is Brahman, the oneness between Brahman and Atman, the self and the totality. Jate is born. So once this knowledge is there with one's own self, once this knowledge takes place, then what happens? So look, na rucha, na rucha means the mantras of Rukveda. Even if na yaju, yajusa, and na also samna iti, means samaveda. 
सो दैट मीन्स वेरी नाइसली सेज न अर्थ ही यूज वर्ड अर्थ मीन्स इयर पर्पज सो दैर इज नो पर्पज अफ द मंत्रज दैट इज रि हाइलाइटेड इन ऋग्वेद मंत्रज दैट इज हाइलाइटेड इन यजुर्वेद और मंत्रज दैट आर हाइलाइटेड इन साम वेद बिकॉज द पर्पज ऑफ वेद इज टू नो वन्स ओन सेल्फ थ्रू द मेथडोलॉजी कॉल्ड नोन टू अनोन Even if the most remote unknown is called heaven, and of course, the worst unknown thing is called life after death. That is also being taught through Vedas. So through this known and to unknown, once you know, let us say, being religious person about heaven. a little sensible person after my death what is going to happen is there life or not after death then you don't have any other choice that it's like you know how always underneath the lamp there is darkness there is shadow even though the lamp that is being lit gives light everywhere but underneath the lamp you will see some shadow same thing like happens to me i want to know anything and everything in fact i know anything and everything except me i don't want to put my effort to look, know myself and sometimes i want to know me through the psychologist this is sad thing to do at least try to know yourself through your through the shastra it's like you no know, you have a mirror with you you don't have strength to look at mirror but you rely upon somebody your lover will love her or whatever okay <laughs> can you tell me how do i look today and based on that fellow's mood we we'll say wow you look so beautiful you look so handsome you look so nice why don't you change a little bit here and there do this thing do that appa your may day is made and i am not telling you jokes this is exactly the job of a psychologist <laughs> i know <laughs> unfortunately one person is here okay shut your mouth you are not psychologist now here okay <laughs> so any anyway, look this is the truth because when a person does not have this is the truth this is the reality whether you accept me or not when a person does not have strength to look at courage to look at mirror to see the one's to see one's own reflection and based on that work for one's own self that person relies upon that person depends upon a person who can guide who can do you know talk nicely about the about me or about that person nothing wrong in it like a child necessary but later on i should have strength to look at the mirror so that's why here is being highlighted so that all this how it happens same thing also this rugveda yajurveda samaveda can also lead me different ways to different things that second say wow swami that's why i am not interested in veda at all only i want to study vedanta you know this is another way <laughs> a god sake <laughs> unless you go through how can you know i can say look swami ji i don't want to learn a b c d alphabets but i want to talk in english hey first please clear your basics okay unless you clear your basics you do not know whether e is coming or was coming i remember in when we started studying i cannot forget this thing because english was not our uh, language either somebody came and imposed and we all are talking today also i, I am number one idiot talking in english no choice <laughs> they went all over the world to <laughs> invade and finally they made us and the new sense they made they have given this thing english as though knowledge 
If you can speak in English, you are a knowledgeable person. You are a knowledged person. Please understand, English is one of the worst languages. There is nothing greatness about English. However, let us not let, let us not get into. So when, uh, especially uh, in science, when we start writing, you know, this note preparing, practical note. So whether testive was taken or is taken, the teacher doesn't see. <laughs> testive taken, that much the fellow will see and he'll get mark. Okay. I am telling the truth. <laughs> so in the practical notebook of any science student, very rarely you will see, they are right. Most of the science student, practical notebook will be horrible. <laughs> Full of grammatical error. You cannot think of, you cannot read. The way it is being testive taken, also is okay. To some, because these two words to be intact. In between whether you will write is, was, will, Somebody once wrote, test tube, test tube will taken, will be taken. <laughs> However, let us not get into the uh, mess here. Like that, basics are required to talk fluently. So all that's Veda also is required, the Veda knowledge has to be there to appreciate, to understand in and out of Vedanta. That's why this is also equally important. Let us read then if this is the case, then what is the purpose of all these things? That's why this is the most important verse. Karmani chitta suddhyartham ekagriyartham upasanam mukshartham brahma vijyanam iti vedanta dindimaha Says, look, for everything there is a purpose. Nothing is useless. As you know, a broken time piece also shows correct time twice in a day. So whether it is worth to keep or not, that is another question. But it gives two times. So I have never seen a single person or single object which is useless. That's why Swami Chinmananji used to say very nicely, that what is what do you mean by the word useless? Especially when somebody says you are useless, that is his voice. Okay, <laughs> tell the person yes, I am useless. If you know how to me use me more, I am no more useless. It is your problem that you did not use me. <laughs> so used less is called useless. However. So karma, upasana also has their role to play in our life, especially for Brahma Jnana. So he says, look, karma chitta suddhyartham. All the actions that we do are useful. It has its own purpose. What is the purpose? It serves the purpose of purifying my mind. So, for the purification of my mind, to polish my likes and dislikes. Earlier days, I, you know, we used to say, if you want to polish your likes and dislikes, build a house, arrange a marriage. Permanently, I am not telling you jokes, your mind will be polished. <laughs> Because when you build a house, I am going through, okay? <laughs> Don't worry. You have to shout, you have to slow down, you have to bring them nicely, and you have to be ready to be cheated. <laughs> you have to be ready for anything and everything. I am not telling you jokes, okay? Knowingly you have to allow, or else things will not, be, will not move. And coordinating them, and finally you get all the blame. And after everything happens, you will discover what you decided, and what comes out is entirely different. <laughs> Other than accepting, remember this much, if you are intelligent enough. <laughs> if you are not intelligent enough, then you know what you do. Another one is arrange a marriage. 
same thing also bringing put together not only two lives two families two societies marriage is not two people okay marriage is two families two societies unfortunately wherever marriage is with two people it has broken so wherever marriage has a failure become failure because of two individuals so if you are looking for this sort of marriage or you have you think this is called marriage is wrong that's why present day marriage is beginning failure because two individuals are getting married not two family forget about two society however coming to the point here they say no no we two individual get married to create a family <laughs> however let me not get into that mess here so how marriage also brings you or uh, brings this uh, ragadvesha uh, polishing through the marriage to if you arrange the marriage because if you bring two people together so that two families two societies whole life only you will get blame <laughs> and if everything goes smoothly in them you will never get acknowledgement once in a while if you happens to be there get a cup of coffee that's all that too depends upon their mood you understand but if anything goes wrong only you will get the blame in fact after your death also their children and grandchildren will bring you out from the coffin to scold you <laughs> this is the truth this is the reality so that's why once you arrange a marriage definitely your rag and dwesha will be polished you understand so in short karma literally now polishes the rag and this one nowadays we have come down all your arranging the marriage now get married your rag and this will be polished is supposed to be okay because if you marry and you have your own ego it will not work you with ego if you marry i'm sorry it never happens it will never happen and that's why marriage is become failure i want to have my own space you understand i want to have my own way of living thinking god sake so indirectly you are strengthening your likes and dislikes and you know what you will do later on let not that is not a point here but because here also point karmaani you need to work No, no, Swami ji, I don't like to work because I am a Vedantin. I am a Moksha. <laughs> so you don't want, or you cannot. Can you see the difference? That's why in ashrams, all escapists they end up. <laughs> so all run away and end up in ashram. You understand? Nice place to get a rescue. get rescued or uh, no uh, uh, sorry <clears throat> to hide one's own self this is the nice place but here it says karmani chitta siddhyartham we need to do work with yoga buddhi which will bring chitta siddhi purify my mind what is purification not get driven away by my likes and dislikes i should not be pulled and pushed by my likes and dislikes let there be my likes i may like many things i may dislike many things i may like few people i may not like at all but those likes liking and disliking must not govern my life liking can be there it's like lord krishna was having liking you know he used to play flute in the childhood in fact he had you know because he was in the jungle and all these things so he used to have a peacock feather but as he grew up <coughs> sorry as he grew up and he became the emperor interestingly flute dropped from his hand being emperor he could not hold flute impossible but the feather continued till death so he had his liking towards feather but the peacock feather 
did not govern his life. Can you see this point? It did not disturb anything. In fact, that becomes an ornament. If we see any Krishna's photos or statue without feather, peacock feather, it's not complete. Whereas without flute, Krishna's life is complete. Can you see this point? There are many Krishna statues without flute. Because flute is involved, time involved. Can you see this point? If you have a flute, you have to take care of the flute, you have to play. So your mind goes other way around. So this is the best example to see. So that's why what need, one need to do here is do karma not to achieve anything but to prepare my mind. And remember, the more my mind is prepared, the more I am happy, comfortable. The maturity makes you to be comfortable. Have you not observed this point? The more you are matured, the more you are richer within. And of course, when you are rich within, you are rich also externally. Because remember, the one who is contented, lying down on the road, looking at the stars in the night, or do time, daytime looking at the sun, how he rich is. Whereas you are going in Rolls Royce car, but uncomfortably any moment anything may happen, especially in Himalayas, if Rolls Royce goes wrong, now helicopter cannot reach, how I will be rescued and how more than me rescued, okay, they will rescue me through the helicopter and other things. But whether my Rolls Royce will go back or not, that's why I am giving the Rolls Royce example, okay. <laughs> in fact, you will feel very comfortable if you have Rolls Royce, you will try to come in, in ordinary car, high, uh, uh, car to Himalayas, enjoy and go back. Let me enjoy my Rolls Royce in the plane. <laughs> now tell me, you have the best, will you be able to enjoy? The enjoyment, the satisfaction depends upon the maturity. And when the Chitta Suddhi is there, you are a matured person. And based on that, you will see the facial expression and many things will happen surrounded by you. Have you not observed? When you are comfortable, every good thing happens in your life. When you are uncomfortable, every wrong thing happens in your life. Have you not observed this? That's why me to be comfortable must not be compromised. That's why karma is required to make me comfortable, not to make me uncomfortable. In fact, people do karma to make them uncomfortable. <laughs> and after being uncomfortably, uncomfortable, they get relief. And relief is like you work. Have you not observed? Your achievement, your success is just like a relief. Have you not observed? How? With this story I'll say. You know, Mula, I can bring today. So, so, just one name, okay? I need to bring. That's all. Nothing else. So, Mula heard that there is a great Swami and he is living and he can give really anything and everything, whatever one wants. And Mula was very unhappy because he was very miser, very insecure, did not trust him. All sort of wrong things. But deep within he wanted some solace or you can say he was looking for satisfaction, happiness. As he did not trust anybody. So he thought of, you know, any, everybody saying that only the sadhu can give me happiness. Let me go and meet him. So when he came to meet, sadhu was there. Sadhu discovered this mula is having a bag like this size of bag. And Mula is not, not leaving that bag either, always holding tightly. So the sadhu asked, what happened? Why you have come now? And the sadhu said, yes. So what is in the bag? Uh, I cannot tell. 